I'm giving the barbell standing curl a C rating for wow. the bicep. A C. Oh. Yeah. And so that's when, controversial. A well, C for barbell curls. Yeah. All right. Coach Greg, and I'm here with Eric Janicki. I said his name right. You and did. we're going over the best exercises to do for your body parts. We're giving them A, B, C, D, or F ratings. And so stay tuned. We are going to have different opinions. Am I right? Is he right? We'll let you decide. You ready? Let's do this. Let's get started. This one is the bice. The bicep. And I think this is usually the most requested thing after, let's say, maybe chest is like, how do you grow your arms? How do you grow your biceps? So I'm excited for this one. Greg, how about you? I am. I think the delt's the most important aesthetically, although I think we want to learn more about the chest and biceps. I think the delt's is more important if there's a muscle that you want to have. It's the delts first. I think it's always just the most requested though. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's the perception of, of like, like looking like a man is like biceps and yeah. chest. Flex, flex. We flex that. Rarely doing a quad shake and flexing the quads. <laughs> or it's like just... flex your delts for me. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't happen. But man, you need, you need to have delts. If you want to be, well, at least for an attraction scale, if you have wider delts, it's, it's an automatic plus. So Greg must think I'm a 10 out of 10 right now. Well, look at this guy. How could he not be? <laughs> All right, so number one bicep exercise we're going to rate is the bicep preacher curl, the bicep preacher curl. Man, I love the preacher curl. I mean, I have to give it an A. It's I'm, I'm, I might even get an A plus, but I'm going to give it an A. I do it in every single workout. I, I find it an easy exercise to do. If my back sore, sometimes I have lower back problems. Sometimes if I'm doing curls with the barbell or dumbbell, it really hurts my back. I have to f concentrate. My abs might get tired. Preacher I can do it every single day. I can go to failure. It feels great. Full stretch, control the weight. And so that's an A for me. All right. I'm going to give the barbell preacher curl or easy bar curl a B plus. And the only reason I'm giving it a B plus and not, let's say, an A is because of the risk factor. And we're right now we're, we're rating exercise based on your ability to grow and an injury is going to take you out of the gym for a foreseeable future. I know everybody's seen the video of the dude who's popped both of his biceps at literally one time. You see that? I did not. He literally tore both doing the preacher curl, doing a preacher curl. Not even that. It was forty fives on each side, but it was very gruesome. He went down the bottom of the rep, and both went doo -doo at the exact same time. And he went. It was a pretty like wow insane video. But anyway, I think that there is obviously when going heavy, going to be inevitably higher risk because you are putting yourself mechanically at a position where at that stretch position you are it's so much tension on that joint because you are planted here if you go all the way down the bottom of the rep with 45 pounds on each side of the bar we're looking you know easy bar is lighter but still over 100 pounds that's gives you no place like you would on a standing curl to give yourself that little bit of relief at the bottom it's a lot of pressure so i would give this an a if Every, I knew everybody out there was going to do this with the amount of weight that they could do. Literally a six second negative, slight pause at the bottom, very comfortable, and then squeeze the top. I think it's extremely controlled movement. I think it's a lot of isolation through both heads of the bicep. And also, this is the exercise in high school. I was obsessed with having big arms. I think is a I don't really do any biceps anymore because they're so dominant for me. But I think this is the single exercise when I was like between 12 and 18, I did them almost every workout because I wanted to have huge arms that really blew up my arms. I literally did them with six second names. I don't even know why I was doing negatives. I was like, I just like know these burns so much more when mm -hmm. I go slow. Um, I was doing those and then reverse barbell easy bar curls for my forearms. And that's why forearms are just kind of absurd um, every single day, not every day, but like two or three days a week in high school and absolutely exploded my arms. I think it's an amazing exercise when done correctly. Next, we have dumbbell hammer curls. I don't like the hammer curls. I don't, I think they're a great exercise if that's what you want to build. I avoid doing them. I never do hammer curls ever. I don't ever focus on my forearms. I've only focused on the bicep. I would prefer doing them with a supinated grip. Um, I am going to give it a B rating because I know that some people want that muscle development. But for me personally, I don't like it. I think a lot of people, they end up eagle lifting with the hammer curls. I don't know why that's the case. They, they seem to just try to lift the heavy weights and do it like this with way too much weight. It's giving it a B. It's not too bad. I'm going to give the dumbbell hammer curls a B minus. 
And the reason for that is, is a couple of things. Number one is going to be, that's going to work more on like kind of the thickness of the bicep. But really, if we're talking about like bang for buck, when you flex your bicep, you don't flex it like this, right? You go like this, you turn it back and you turn that hand in. So I think supinated bicep movements where you can really hit the peak are going to be your best exercise. So like a supinated inclined bicep curl, things like that, or a preacher curl are going to give you that better bang for your buck when it comes to bicep exercise. Number two is range of motion. With a hammer curl, dumbbell, you got this huge, you know, head of your dumbbell, you're really only gonna be able to go to here and then down to here. So by limiting your range of motion, like anything else, you are limiting the motor recruitment, the muscle recruitment available to you in that exercise. You're not gonna get that stretch media hypertrophy. You're probably not gonna get that peak contraction as well as you would with a supinated grip. So for that reason, I'm gonna go C plus, B minus. Let's go dumbbell supinated curl. I have to give this one A, whether you're doing it standing or seated, I think this is the way to go with the supination, get the peak of the bicep. Um, I'm not gonna give it an A plus just cause I find that it can cause me to hurt my lower back a little bit. And it does tend to cause people to cheat a little bit too much, a little bit more ego lifting on this one. But certainly I think an A, I'd be surprised you give it less than an A minus. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna give dumbbell supination curls an A or an A plus depending on how you're performing them. Um, I think that the reason for this is you can hit really good range of motion and supination is key when it comes to just hitting the peak of the bicep, just that really turned in palm. And you can do these here, you can do them standing. My favorite variation is on the incline bench, pinning the elbows back, putting your biceps on an island, and then reaching back and doing an ISO supination curl and keeping the elbows down. It's a really, really good way to not have to use quite as much weight. It's going to completely take out the front delt from the movement pattern. Because when you're curling here, you can inevitably do almost do kind of like a half front raise as mm -hmm. well. Whereas if you're pinned back and your elbow's down and you don't move your elbow at all, it's going to put your bicep on an island. It's a tremendous exercise. A lot more pros are leaning into this. So if you're going to do the dumbbell supinated, I would do it on the incline with that variant, pinning the elbows back. And that's for those, I'm going to give those an A+. Plus. And I actually do that exact exercise almost every single day that I do my biceps. One of my staples, there that exact way. So highly recommend it. Barbell standing curls. I have to still give it a day. It's a great exercise. How can you go wrong? I just don't like the fact that I can cheat on it a bit too much with my lower back. Some people look like they're doing the limbo during this exercise. You can get a full contraction. It's great. Um, you can't really supinate as you're going up, but it's already, your M's already being supinated. Supinated, by the way, is you hold like a cup of soup, pronated like this. So for me, it's a great exercise. It's easy. It's it's accessible to everyone. And so I, I, I have no problem with this exercise. I'm giving the barbell standing curl a C rating. For wow. Bicep. A C. Oh. Yeah. And so- That's controversial. A well, C for barbell curls. Yeah. All right. And so when we're talking about- these exercises, we have to think about their alternatives and also about their safety and efficacy and also the ability to use momentum. The major reason that I'm going to give it a C is when I, when you barbell curl in that finished position, that bar is way in front of you. The most important part of any bicep movement, almost more than I think almost any other body part is that negative, that eccentric. And if that bar is in front of you pulling you forward, inevitably that's going to tax your lower back a hmm. lot. It's going to be harder. Probably why I complain all the time about <laughs> lower back. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're holding six second negatives with a 25s on each side plus a 45 pound barbell, we're talking about, you know, 95 pounds. And that's a lot to kind of hold forward, like hold with your back for six second eccentrics or maybe a one second hold to the top. So I think if we're going to talk trade-offs, I would highly suggest a line cable curl because now you're on the floor. The vector of force is exactly the same. It's coming from below you. You set up in front of you and then you lie back. You're laying back. It disallows you from using any momentum. You get a great peak contraction. It's huge negative without any tax in the lower back. So if we're talking about exercise efficacy, sure, there's an exercise that works, barbell standing bicep curls, but why would I rate it an A when... There's another exercise I feel like has does the same job, but way better, way more effectively than something that I know could produce lower back pain. It's harder to hold the negative. It's harder to get a better good peak contraction, and your hands are stuck in one position. So you can even do your lying with an easy bar, so you can have more of that kind of ergonomic 
kind of slight angle in with the hands. So for that reason, we're going to see. The lying cable curl, whenever I had a low back problem, that's one of the exercises I'd go to. And so I absolutely love that exercise. I think the reason I like the barbell curl so much is because that's the weight. It's almost that ego. You you want to like feel the weight in your hands. You're lifting whatever it is, 100 pounds, whatever it's going to be. And when you're doing a cable curl, it's just less cool, internalized, and it's harder to go hard. Like if I grab a, a barbell and I do like, and I did them just the other day, 10 reps, I put a bar down, I, I'm done and it's hard. When I do cable, I have to mentally get in the zone to force myself to push hard. And I think, and obviously you can do it. I've seen you do it, but the average person, I don't know if they can get in that pain zone and stay there long enough doing the cable curl versus you tell them, look, curl this up and down. They're going to go hard. So I don't know, it, it's a, there's a trade-off. I think C is a is maybe a bit harsh, maybe A is a bit high, maybe it's somewhere in the middle because I do see that back injury as, as potentially being a problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's any reason, let's say you're doing 95 on the barbell that you can't do a 95 on the line curl and then you're proving yourself, holy shit, I can actually curl this without any momentum. I think that's a better way to lock in personally. Yeah, it's uh, you're you can force yourself to train really hard without that ego, like you're just used to it. Most people, I don't know if they can... They can do that to the, your degree, at least. That's fair. And I think that's the key is like, so with these videos and that being the last exercise, I think it's a great segue to understand like there's multiple ways to skin a cat. I think there's so many great exercises. I think that I will stand by to the end of time, to the nth degree that adding a negative to any of the movements that you're doing and adding a little more range of motion is going to only help you from a hypertrophic standpoint. So we're not talking strength. We're talking about building muscle. Those two principles, with that, whatever you're going to do, standing, barbell, bicep curl, seated, bicep curl, whatever you want to do, I think that adding those two components are going to help you regardless. So even if you love a movement pattern, try those two things, and I think that you'll only get more out of And you'll also be able to go maybe a little lighter and have a less risk of injury. But yeah, I hope you guys are loving this content, these videos. It was such a pleasure. It was so fun to hear Greg's perspective. He's got so much knowledge from being in the gym, coaching so many people. So it was fun to have a little bit of a back and forth on some of these different exercises. And I hope you guys did too. So comment below. Do you guys agree with coach Eric, coach Greg? If you're not subscribed to coach Greg's channel, go and subscribe. Such amazing human being. If you don't know somebody in person, you see somebody as an online persona, you might think a certain way about them, but like being here and having Greg welcome me into his home and let me eat his food and try his supplements and literally like open his doors to me and be so hospitable. Like that shows me how good of an amazing and a human being that Greg is. So even though he puts out videos and calls people out for not being natural or whatnot, like he is such an amazing dude. And behind the scenes, you don't see him messaging people and telling them, Hey, I'm going to post this video. Are you cool with it? Cause he knows that it's only going to increase their clout because it's actually great for these guys that might actually be natural to be accused of not being natural. Cause that means they look so good that they could not be natural. So that's what I've learned from this trip is like, he's such an amazing person. He's such a grinder. He's a great entrepreneur. So I'm thankful. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now um, picture this. Somebody walks up to you and says, you look natural. You're going to say they're either joking or it's an insult. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, imagine, like, you look natty. That's an insult. You want to be called uh, a fake net. You want people to think you're taking something. Yeah. So, I think it's uh, it's only it's only a compliment if you ever get called out for being uh, not natural, even if you are natural. That's, like, the best compliment you could ever get. Definitely. So. All right. Hope you learned something. And don't forget, please go subscribe to Eric Janicki. You can follow him on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. He's hilarious, highly intelligent. Look at the size of this guy. So please go and check him out. Got to give him over a million followers. Check him out. Subscribe right now.